Okay, if you're familiar, subscribe to my videos, you'll know that just a few minutes ago we did a tune-up on this truck. This is a 98 Chevrolet half-ton, 5.7 liter Vortec, last year the 5.7 liter. Now we're going to focus our attention on the driver's side, we're going to do a wheel bearing. If you want to look at my video playlists, or my videos that I have posted on this channel, down below there is a, an explanation of various noises, clunking, growling, whining noises that you might be experiencing in your vehicle. One of them describes a sound you will know after watching the video that it is a wheel bearing. This is what we're going to do on this speed truck here. A lot of growling going down the road. Whoa, sounds like a tank rolling when you're driving it. Wheel bearing. <coughs> I've removed the tire, jacked up the corner of the vehicle with a floor jack, and then I used a jack stand. Use jack stands, people. Do never trust your vehicle to be raised off the ground safely with any type of jack at all, floor jack, scissor jack, high lift jack, always get it up and then put a jack stand underneath it or you will be one of those statistics of people that happen to pass away from their vehicle landing on top of them while they were partially underneath it or all the way underneath it. We don't want that. First thing we got to do, like I say, remove the wheel. This is a brake caliper right here. We need to get that out. <coughs> If you look behind here, it's kind of hard to do with one hand, but I'm going to do it anyway. This caliper is held on by two bolts, one here. These are Allen head bolts, three eighths. Make sure you got the right size because you don't want to strip this baby out. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this caliper and we'll start filming again in a minute. Okay, we got our bolts out. <clears throat> here they are, two of them. We're going to take a pry bar, we're going to gingerly pry away this caliper from the rotor. A little bit at a time. There she is. Do not let it hang. It will bend this line. And we're going to remove the rotor. <coughs> and here, where's my flashlight? There it is. You'll see the wheel bearing hub assembly that we're going to be removing. This is held in by three bolts around the back side of it here. You need to remove this nut, but we'll get to that here in a minute. I'm going to step over here to the table. Here's our new assembly. Here's what it looks like right out of the box. It's got clips here holding the ABS cable, which plugs into the side here. Our wheel speed sensor <coughs> for the ABS. Excuse me. Be very careful with this. If you break this, you are FUBAR. Dust cap covering the bearing. We're going to flip this over. Here you can see brand new hub assembly. This is what they look like. You look right down the middle, right here. These are splined inside. That's where the axle on a four wheel drive goes through to deliver power to the front wheels. This is the nut holding that axle on right here. It's a big nut. I'm going to go get the tools and I'm going to pull this and we'll be right back. Okay. Here's the situation. This uh, we're gonna start off quick. You see what we got going on here in a minute. This uh, uh, nut for the axle needs to come out. Uh, it's 35 millimeter. Okay, I have right here. I'm do it the cheater way. Underneath that nut is always gonna be a washer. Right here. Okay. Now we're gonna move on to the bolts that are holding the wheel hub on which you can see behind here there's three of them they are they started out life as 15 millimeter bolt now they are probably gonna have to do what we did here pound on a 14 millimeter now you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes on that on there oh by the way these little holes in the front of the of the uh, hub, they're designed so you can pass the socket through and get at those bolts. Much better. There's one. Spin it around. Try your 15. Tap it on with a hammer, which we will. Right there. Just because they're so heavily corroded, I don't expect this will work. Nope. 
So we'll step back and we'll do what we did before. We'll take my one of my 14 millimeter sockets. After I get this nut off or this bolt off of here, we'll hammer it onto there and we'll try again. Okay, so after some creative uh, use of tools, we got all three bolts for the wheel bearing out. The next step, and it's gonna you're gonna want to pull this. I already had this off. You're gonna want to pull this off. Uh, I used an air chisel. Don't know if you have one. Like I say, I got all the fun cheater tools here. Uh, otherwise, it's gonna take some uh, some beating on this thing with a hammer on the inside of it. Uh, to get creative, a little bit of uh, possibly use a chisel between the uh, bearing wall and the uh, spindle. Uh, you just want to make sure. Oh, phone's ringing. Hopefully, uh, my girlfriend will get that. Yay! All right. Anyway, um, just to separate this bearing from the spindle or from the uh, well, I guess. It's. Anyway, before we do that, though, we have uh, we have the ABS line coming off of here, the wheel speed sensor. Um, it's connected here on top of the A-arm with the 13 millimeter bolt these two clips here and here you can see them, bam bam, rusty on the frame underneath this mud flap there's another connector right there sorry about the light it's kind of annoying I know and there's the connector for the for the wheel speed sensor right there just gonna standard connector just unconnect that or disconnect that I'm gonna go ahead and do this and get the wheel bearing out of the way and we'll come right back Okay, what you want to do when you get to this point is uh, this surface here, around where the bearing is going to sit, needs to be clean and free of rust, debris, anything else. I used an air grinder. Be very careful if you do. You don't want to remove a bunch of steel that you need to hold that bearing in place, the original angle that it was. The shaft for the joint here was covered with some debris. Make sure you wipe and clean that off. Also inside here, if there's rust or corrosion, you need to get in there and clean it. This one is pretty clean. Otherwise, the new surface of the bearing will not slide in there correctly. You will have problems. At this point, we can put the new bearing on. Which what you want to do, if I can do this one-handed, slide on just like that. You want to make sure your ABS or your wheel speed sensor line here is in the same position it was when you took it off. There's where that bolts up. Remember there's another clip up here on the firewall. Same thing. Bolt that up in there. Hit connect your obviously one thing here. Oh. This brake shield probably should have been replaced. Fortunately he doesn't have one. Not a bad idea to put a new one on. This goes on where the bolts go in on the forward side of the wheel bearing down here and down here. Put your bolts in, tighten them up, put your nut, your washer back in and your nut, tighten it up to torque specs. I don't have that information offhand, I will shortly. And uh, I'm going to do that and we'll come back. Okay, here's the wheel bearing where we'll have assembly put back into place. The torque spec for this nut right here will be above you right now, somewhere in that area right there probably. The bolts holding the wheel bearing into place are very tight. The shield is back into place. The ABS line is tightened here. Put into its clips there. Difficult to see. Tightened here. Clip there. And the Christmas tree. Little plastic zippy thing. Or uh, whatever you want to call it. It's shoved back into the frame. Shut that. Now what we're going to do is put the rotor back on. A couple tips while we're doing that. Ugh. You look on the rotor here, there's these little circles where rust formed through the holes here, here, and here to avoid any kind of a situation where you have an uneven uh, well basically when you put it on make sure they line back up. Difficult to see but make sure you got those little circles where the rust was on the rotor in the same place where the circles were on the hub. You understand? Hopefully you do. At this point, with the rotor in place, we need to turn the caliper to its original location. Make sure you do so the same way that it came out. Everything lines up correctly. Use the same bolts. Tighten them. And I will get that far and we'll come back for some final uh, comments on this work. Thank you. Quick note. Um, when you're putting the caliper back on, I should have remembered this, you're probably going to want to compress the piston on the caliper just a little bit. 
uh, to make room for the new pads. You, if, if it's a tight fit when you try to slide the caliper back over the rotor, do not force it. Take a clamp, just like I got going on here, and close that piston a little bit. Compress that piston just a little bit so you don't have to fight the pads on the rotor when you're sliding the caliper back into place. Something extremely, extremely important that you want to know about this. If you ever do brakes on your car, if you ever have to compress these pistons with a clamp, pump the brakes up before you put the vehicle into gear. If you do not do this, you will reverse it out of your garage. You will not have brakes. The gap, if you press the brake once, needs to close this, these, these shoes against the rotor. Always, always, always pump up your brake shoe, your brake pedal before you put the car into gear. Even before you start it, it's a good idea to pump it. Just pump it up till it feels good. Then start it up, pump it up, pump, 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 pump. I can't say that enough. Man, I've seen it. I've done it. Actually, one time I pulled out of the back of a shop years and years and years ago after putting brakes in. Sure as shit, no brakes. Pardon my French. I'll have to uh, probably fix that a little <laughs> expletive. Um, I had enough wherewithal to pull the e-brake, which actuated the rear, <laughs> and I was able to stop before I backed into, I don't remember what was back there, probably a fence or a tree or something. Also, when you get to this point, just since you got it apart, just make sure these slides are good and loose, make sure they're not seized up. If they're seized, just pluck them out, clean them up, put some grease on them. If you don't do this, if they don't... If they don't uh, move in and out freely like that, uh, you're going to have uneven brake pad wear. Um, okay, thank you. Okay, we got it back together. The wheel is back on. Uh, we're going to take it down the road now. Make sure everything's kosher. Make sure that dust shield's not rubbing on the rotor. Anything like that. Just double check to make sure uh, everything feels right with the brakes and whatnot. Just as a precaution to the owner of the vehicle. <coughs> um, at this point, the lovely Lori will be putting the dust cap back on the wheel because my hands are completely incredibly greasy. Um, again, like I said earlier, make sure that you uh, pump up those brake pedal. That brake pedal, if you have to collapse that caliper, and very important. I'm not gonna. I can't say it enough. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. And if you have any questions, post them below, of course. And if you're interested in a tune-up on this vehicle. We just did one earlier in the day. It will be up at the same time this one is up. Just check my channel. And uh, thank you for watching.